And I love having him here, and he's Jonathan Tucker. Good to see you, sir. It's, as I said, a thrill to be here every time. Rich. Appreciate it. I appreciate me. it right here. And uh, uh, Kingdom returns for third and final season on AT&T's Audience Network at 8 Eastern and Pacific tonight. Jay Kalina, who you play, kid with a lot of issues uh, in the world of MMA, um, is now in real estate. We just saw a scene with you playing him. It's not going very well. No, there's some good, they've done some good advertisements around LA where they've got these uh, bus benches that they've taken over where you've got my image there and it says, I will beat you into submission. I will fight for real estate. And I just think that's just a fabulous marketing It, it is ploy. a great, nice marketing ploy yeah. right there. Uh, it, what's it like seeing yourself on a, on a bench like that? I, uh, I assume that's a first. It, right? it is a first. Yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. It's very, it's very high class. Uh, mm -hmm. Having myself there positioned on a bus bench. Yes. Uh, there is a fighter actually recently who just won a fight, and I, he and he does sell real estate. So mm -hmm. at the end, when they when they he raised his arm, he says, "Is there anything you want to say?" And he says, "Yeah, if you're looking to buy a house in Long Island, give me a call." <laughs> and he's a terrific fighter. And if I was buying a house in Long Island, I'll tell you, I would be calling. You'd be doing that. Indeed. And so um, now we'll talk about your Red Sox and your Pats in a second. I see you've got a cut over your your eye on the right, just to the right of your eye. It looks fresh to me. It, it's pretty fresh. It's less than 24 hours. Are those stitches that are sticking out right stitches. now? Some good stitches. Dr. Daniel Poor in Beverly Hills, plastic oh. surgery, took good care of me. I know him. Yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah. It was 90 minutes from the time this thing was open to the time it was sewn shut beautifully under his uh, eye and with his hands. This is the second good stitching. He also did this side. Yes. The first season of uh, Kingdom when I took an elbow uh, with Jay Thoroughbred Haran, who was in full mount and dropped a nice elbow right So in the these eye. things are real is what Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, you know, look, the the thing about our show that we're most proud of and this is not just the production or not just the actors but everybody on, on the team from mm -hmm. prop and electric and grip to our DP and uh, and wardrobe is that we're honoring this world that hasn't really been reflected before and it gives it a, a sense of nobility when you um, when you put in the work that it takes to show what these men and women and their families and their teams and their coaches and mm -hmm. chiropractors and nutritionists, what they give and sacrifice to uh, make a fight really happen. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that takes, uh, you know, it takes a little bit of jostling around and we've all gotten a number of injuries, all of us on the show, but nothing, nothing too severe. And mm -hmm. also it gives it, it gives, it's a good, it's a good talking point when you're selling your show premiering tonight. Sure. That if that you you cut your eye open though, doing oh well this one was for entertainment tonight you know they're a lot rougher they're making the rich eisen show look pretty darn weak out here i mean we could throw wow. elbows a lot, here a lot of space and distance wow, between your uh, your 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 guests and and your uh well, and, we, and your team we do normally have a scar segment called who wears it better i mean you know um and so it's either you or i don't know we could go anywhere with yeah. that one well we, so we were till we, we did this segment yesterday where we were just kind of doing some you and you light and who? sparring cam Cameron Damn, Matheson. And you know, I know where you live, boss, and, and you know where I live, so I'm waiting for that nice bouquet of flowers. Well, he's a pretty boy. Did you, did you mess he's him up? He's very handsome. He's, he's a drew former on some soap tattoos actor. Yeah. For this. Well, I don't want to give away the segment. But, okay, so that... But we did have a nice jostle, and I'll tell you this, the exclusive on the Rich Eisen show is mm -hmm. that the E.T.'s can, Cam, which is his segment, mm -hmm. is going to be the best one yet with <laughs> well, Jonathan Tucker. Just in time for Kingdom to reappear on uh, AT&T's audience tonight at 8 Eastern. What'd you make of the Bryce Harper... Fight. I was curious with, to know what, what where where that umpire was that who was calling the pitches. Man, he didn't take a lot. He didn't do. He didn't put a lot of effort Buster in. Buster Posey, the catcher, stood there and watched it unfold. Just watched. I know. It was really it was really disheartening. And I, one of the things I love about baseball is that you don't have that sort of. Uh, you know, you can bring your you can bring your grandfather and you can bring your young son. You don't have to see that sort of violence. And, right. Uh, look, pitchers don't forget. Uh, but that was a flagrant pitch. Oh, Boy, that's no that was question. just totally inappropriate. And somebody's light livelihood and their professional careers on the line like that, that is some, something needs to happen, but certainly not a fight like that. Well, I'm saying, you know, let's let's make a rule where nobody can come out of the dugout and let's have a one on one fight. If you want to fight, yeah. it's you versus the guy. Maybe no fights though. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, but if if we're going to have one, let's not have a pig pile. Let's get one guy against one guy. I maybe can, look, maybe they can they can have an octagon that comes up from the middle of the turf. That's actually a great idea. And off I, we I go. fully subscribe to that idea. That but, would be fantastic. Like the, but that's then a sanctioned regulated fight. You know, you've got like a helmet. I mean, imagine if that helmet had actually Mm -hmm. gone where he had thrown it you know he wasn't throwing it to the side he was a bad throw with the helmet <laughs> he could have busted that guy's head open it was kind of a horrible throw it was horrible 
But uh, which it was is a horrible what, throw, yeah. Which is why I think he should have he should have got more games, man. I, just I for prefer that the Smashville throwing stuff on the ice. Stuff, you know, I mean, yeah. I thought that was fantastic. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, I'm a, I guess I'm a Penn, I'm a I'm a Pittsburgh fan in general. I, I love Pittsburgh. That. I just love that town. I think it's like it's a great American town. It and is those that. fans are so devoted and passionate. And there's no other town you see where there's like a. 45-year-old female attorney coming down for a smoke break wearing a Penns jersey, <laughs> you know, while she's, well, to, you know, in the middle of the day, getting ready for the game. It's just a phenomenal, I, I love Pittsburgh, and I love those teams, so. That's a scene I'm sure that's playing out right now on the streets of Pittsburgh right yeah. around after lunchtime for game two that's tonight. Jonathan Tucker of Kingdom right here, but. How do you square that circle with uh, the Steelers yeah. and the and the Patriots? Hey, though? You know, I don't know, man. You I, can't square I, that circle. It, I, do, I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm too liberal in my in my fandom, but I yeah I I've just always liked Steel Town, man. Oh, on I don't blame you. Is... Feel the the Pittsburgh. On ice grass, we will still kick Cincinnati's ass or Cleveland's ass. Feel the Pittsburgh Steel. That's yeah. tough stuff to push away. That's true. I, I was just on vacation um, for five days. My wife and I went to a, a wedding. Uh, we were in Italy. And I walk into some shop, some small shop, and a Duomo. It, you're in the, you're in a beautiful right, church. Right, we're right, we're about down the street from the Duomo. That's right there. <laughs> and it was like some leather shop or whatever where you can buy a jacket mm -hmm. or or a bag or what have you. And on the wall, this guy who spoke hardly a lick of English, a picture of him measuring a suit, a jacket for Franco Harris. Fantastic. On the wall, and that's I'm like, fantastic. I mean, Steeler fans are. Everywhere. Yeah, but look, I like working class towns that really support their teams. I put Boston in there. Yeah. I put, you know, Philadelphia in there as much as I don't like the Eagles. I, I uh -oh. put I put I put <laughs> Pittsburgh in there. I don't put New York in there. They buy their way out, other than obviously the Mets. And I like and I, I like the Giants too, but the teams that you support um, are the teams that I think just buy their way out of problems. They're like tossing the keys of the valet and calling the guy a bad name and throwing a dollar down. Okay. The it's just okay. inappropriate work. Okay. Um, just and when that's you where thought. I stand. Just when you thought we had that there would be ever. that there would be no fisticuffs <laughs> during this conversation. We're three like games back and things are, we're, we're, we're looking good. Okay. I want to take a sixty second break. Come back and talk a little bit more because I'd love to get your <laughs> sense and what everybody on your set thinks of Conor McGregor maybe stepping into an actual uh, square yeah, square ring. The uh, fantastic audience drama kingdom returns for a third and final season tonight at 8 eastern and pacific and jonathan tucker is here moments ago during our conversation when you took a uh, a broadside swipe at the new york yankees before we took a break major league baseball reduced bryce harper's suspension a game he's now going to be serving just a three-game suspension that starts tonight so he knocked it down from four to three hunter strickland suspension of six games we don't know if they've touched it um so that was just uh, the latest right there now then if you think the Red Sox aren't <laughs> sitting on a freaking Fort Knox spending money like they're drunken sailors on shore leave trying to win a game I mean, look at the against numbers. the Yankees. Look at the numbers. Don't say that. They don't pan out that way. The, the Yankees, You've got to be kidding me. I mean, there's just isn't. I mean, uh, from my understanding, and look, you're the, you're the sports No, no, no. It's but, but I feel like uh, aren't the Sox like the fourth? I spend what do you got over there? Look it up. There's something called the internet right yeah. in front of Chris Brosman sure over there. Cubs are Stand by. If I am right, though, if I am right, I don't I'm know who the hell the Yankees are spending their money you're on. Gonna you're going to take me to the Raiders Patriots game. No, it's no, I'm, on you if I'm right. And well, if not, I'll take you. Uh, Los Angeles Dodgers are first this year, 246 million. Yeah, they're, they're always the pluckiest quarter billion team in Major League Baseball. <laughs> the New York Yankees are second this year. Who the hell is 202.388 million. Is, is A-Rod still on their payroll? Boston oh, Red Sox are third, 201.8. Yeah, right yeah. behind. Right we're, behind. That's we're what I water said. skiing As behind said, the same yachts, pal. As I said, well, I don't know about that. I think we're, we're, we're pouring well, our own gas in the tank while you guys are having guys pour all up, pull up and oh, put their hoses in. It's a totally different You've got to be kidding me. The breakdown is uh, 131 million for the Yankees on the 25-man roster, 43 million on the D. 27 million retained, 3 million buried. Buried where? In the sand? I'm not sure. In, in a rock underneath a rock's house? Time selling Spot tickets. Track. I mean, that, the, look at that. They build this new stadium. They charge everyone a fortune. You yeah. All these people who can't go see a game and bring their family anymore. And payback is beautiful because they're having a really challenging time filling that park. <laughs> We're the Sox, man. It's a beautiful Fenway. <laughs> it's holy. Cathedral. You can get in. There's some cheap seats still to be had. <laughs> They don't have that luxury box problem. Mm. It's not corporate America in there. That's Boston. <laughs> Can't like argue. Pittsburgh, Can't argue like it, Philadelphia, like Working Chicago. Working class, blue collar town. That's my man. Right there. Well, Jonathan, thanks for coming on the show. <laughs> don't cut me off. <laughs> I like the Giants. I'm a Giants fan. I like the Giants quite a bit. Now, 
what do you and the rest of those on your set and your your colleagues who are as into the world of mixed martial arts as you think of Conor McGregor getting into a square ring, taking on Floyd Mayweather? Doesn't everybody think that? I mean, I, think the, I guess I guess uh, um, we, there's been this pushback that it reduces the quality of boxing as a sport. I think Delahoya oh, came out and said this. That's, uh, but I mean, I, the fact is, like, <laughs> but combat sports has always been an event. It's always been a spectacle. And I don't know if we're going to see a, a more extraordinary um, version of that than Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor getting in this in this uh, in this scrap. It's going to be. I think it's going to be awesome. Now, are you of the mindset he doesn't have a chance? A I think the shot, best part about the sport is like, and this is why it's so hard. You know, go try, if you guys bet on 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 uh, mixed martial arts, it's just, it's nearly impossible because anything can happen. This is not, it's not But it's not MMA here. I mean, we're- No, but the, boxing is this, I mean, boxing is, the, Connor's not gonna be coming in. I, I think it's gonna be, I think it's anybody's fight. I think anybody who says otherwise, or they know who's gonna win, or Connor's never boxed before, or Floyd's too old, or you don't know the striking power, hitting power of Connor. Like, mm -hmm. nobody knows anything. These guys are in their own camp, they're in their own world. The mind game is the most important part of it. And everybody wins. They're both going to walk away with hundreds of millions of dollars. Pay per view is going to win. Fans are going to win. I, it's like a no loss situation. I'm I, really excited about I it. I do love Conor McGregor's mind game. I it's, think he's as good as it gets. It's so much fun just listening what comes out of his mouth or on his Twitter account. Mm -hmm. I just like the, and the, what he's going to say about. I think he's going to bring up Floyd's past. Floyd's history. I think everything's going to be fair game for him leading up to this thing once it finally does happen. People that's going to make it really personal. They love authenticity. I mean, this is like why you go to, you look to sports, you look to like great drama. Authenticity, it rings so clearly and loudly across our species. We're just always on the lookout for inauthenticity. You're looking for it. If someone's selling you a used car right. in a restaurant, somebody in a business situation, you're, everybody's got these extraordinary detectors of, of, of BS. And when you find somebody at a very high and public level who is completely truthful, um, it's, it's wildly attractive. I love how you say that about how we're always looking for inauthenticity and trying to call it out mm -hmm. in sports. We really are, especially like just throwing out a, a latest example of it. Somebody coming on this show accusing one team of buying themselves a championship, right. and yet their team is only about <laughs> a million behind in payroll. Was it you know million? what I'm saying? So I don't think it was yeah, before. Yeah, and that's yeah, just 202 to like 201. It well, changed. Well, the fact so is, you want to talk numbers about numbers. BS meters? Number three and versus number two. You guys are outspending us. That's just how it is. <laughs> just the facts, right? Just, just twenty. The facts. I think it's just twenty-seven over facts. Twenty-seven overall. I don't think it's problem. a fact That's of who problem. we know is going to win between Mayweather or Connor. I think yeah. we factually know who spends more money every year consistently to buy championships with an attitude. By the way, you can't quantify <laughs> attitude other than the Yankees. Did you, know. did you hear how Bob? Uh, this happened over the weekend too. Bob Aram said, "If Mayweather doesn't make the fight, Pacquiao will do it." Do yeah, you, I don't think we want to see that fight. He did though. say, did you didn't hear that? He did say that. Wow. Yeah, he said if Mayweather if Mayweather's not interested, Pacquiao will do it. Uh, yeah, I don't think it has the same juice. I love Pacquiao. Uh, I trained at this uh, gym uh, with with Justin Fortune, who's uh, one of his conditioning coaches. Yeah. And Pacquiao's a phenomenal fighter, and he's uh, an extraordinary human being. But I, I just don't think it has the same resonance with fans as this Mayweather, uh, as the Mayweather. Um, McGregor fight. Sure. Well, one of the reasons why Kingdom works so well is the authenticity of it, just to bring this whole conversation full circle, and you and Grillo and the, and Matt Loria and Nick Jonas and the rest of the crew there. Um, so great, honestly. And yeah, I just well, love, it, I love been, watching it. It's been a real privilege for, for us to be a part of it, and this is our final season, um, and I think all of us are walking away with our heads up high because – the fans of the world of mixed martial arts, and then the fighters and their families and supporters mm -hmm. have said that we've reached our 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 bottom bar, the, the bar, the, the only one we wanted to reach, which mm -hmm. was can we honor them in their world? And and to, to know that we have feels uh, it's one of the pr great privileges of my life. Yeah, it's just at the ascension of the sport itself. It's been uh, it's been perfect timing in that regard. Thank you, sir, for coming on. Uh, for come back me. any single time I it. and you leave you leave uh, unbruised, unscarred. Unbattered. Well, yeah, it's, it's yeah. other than my ego, mm -hmm. which slightly, slightly battered <laughs> by your Yankee, uh, by your Yankee pride. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. If you like that video, be sure to download our app, and I'll be sure to help the NFL figure out what a catch is.